Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at a sub 60 buck ATX case and setting up what I think is going to be a good example of a kickstart gaming PC that you could build while waiting for GPU prices to return to more reasonable levels. The case in question is this, the Game Max Trooper, which for 55 quid here in the UK could represent one of the most well-rounded starting points for anyone who wants to build a system on a budget, but doesn't want to cut back on some of the key features which are usually found in higher-end builds. Taking the Trooper out of the box, the one word I would use to describe it is simply clean. It's a simple design with a solid front fascia and tempered glass side panel. The front fascia being closed off would normally be a hard no for me if it was the main source of cooling, but taking off the tempered glass side panel reveals the Trooper's somewhat different approach to things. Switching things up, the Trooper uses a filtered cutout on the backside panel as either its air intake or exhaust, and it comes pre-installed with two high airflow 120mm Game Max Razer ARGB fans on the side, and another one of these fans on the rear of the case set up as an exhaust. There's still room for a few more fans up at the front of the case, and another two up top, allowing you to add more if you need. But for a 55 quid case to come pre-installed with three fans right off the bat is certainly going to be enough for a good entry level system. Inside, we also get multiple cutouts for cable pass-through, and while there's no rubber grommets here, got to cut costs somewhere to hit that insane price point I suppose, the holes are slightly rounded off, with no sharp edges. So no risk of fraying your cables or cutting your fingers, which is always good. Now I'm more than happy with this approach on a sub 60 quid case, and in honesty, I would rather have this rounded off metal approach than a cheap, ill-fitting rubber grommet that you can maybe find on some other budget cases. Other than that, there's not too much to say about the main area of the case. It's roomy, it's well laid out, and while it doesn't bring anything startlingly new to the table, it doesn't do anything wrong either, it's just a clean, solid base for you to build in. Taking a look at the rear side, and there's a few nice surprises here. First off, you get two caddies for 3.5 inch hard disk drives, which can also be used for SSDs. These are on a rail and are toolless, which is always my preference. They're decently spaced and they've got a nice satisfying click when you install them in place. In addition to those, there's a separate removable backplate which can hold two 2.5 two inch SSDs. Again, these are in a sensible location and they fit snugly when installed. But it's the box to the left of the solid state mount that is the biggest surprise here though. Pre-installed, you get a full 6 to 1 SATA powered ARGB fan hub. Now I love seeing this in a budget case, as I was one of those people who, only a few years ago, ended up buying one of these things separately, and at considerable cost. So for it now to have trickled down to this level as a pre-installed feature is absolutely fantastic. The hub is one PWM fan cable and one 5 volt ARGB cable, which are going to connect to your motherboard, and you can add up to 6 fans in total, meaning that you can reduce cable clutter in your build while easily controlling the RGB elements of all fans from just one header. Up top, you can see that the case reset switch has been repurposed to control the RGB, and this button allows you to cycle through a whole load of different presets or hand control back to the motherboard. Another really nice surprise here is the amount of space you get in the back. We've got over 1 inch of cable clearance, just under 30mm in total, and that's enough to route even the most awkward chonkers of PSU cables nicely. Far too often in a budget PC case have I seen that the room in the back is just far too tight to really do anything with. And while yes, it's true that for most builders they're just going to squeeze stuff in there and forget about it, having the room in the back there just leads to a much nicer building experience. Speaking of the building experience, well, it was a breeze in this case, very pleasant for sure. We're going to go the whole hog this week and use a couple of other Game Max parts which have featured on this channel already. First up, the PSU we're going to be using is the Game Max Rampage 600W, which retails for around 35 to 40 quid and should provide more than enough performance for this build and an eventual GPU addition. The heart of the system will be a Ryzen 7 5700G APU. I got this for £230 used on eBay, and that's going to be sitting in the MSI B550 MPG Gaming Edge Wi Fi motherboard. And we're going to be coupling these two main components with 16 gigs of Corsair DDR4 3600 and a 256GB M.2 SSD. 
and we've got a cool everything with the really lovely Game Max Gamma 600, which retails at about 47 quid here in the UK and I really like. We're going to top things off and complement all these parts with a 2TB Western Digital Black hard disk drive, which I've simply got at hand, but it would maybe set you back something like £30 if you got one used on eBay, and that's just going to be used for the bulk game storage. So if we break down the costs, we can see that for well under 600 quid, we've got a pretty solid system. Now you could certainly cut that down to under 500 quid if you opted for a Ryzen 5 5600G and if you kept your eyes peeled on eBay and you were happy with 6 core 12 threads instead of the 8 core 12 threads we get on the 5700G. And if you were willing to reduce CPU performance even further, something like the Ryzen 5 3600 is still a solid budget offering. And if you paired that with something like the widely available sub £200 RX 6500 XT, then you would have a genuinely decent 1080p gaming system for just over 650 quid. So with the 5700G system built, what are the overall impressions of the Trooper? Well, on the whole, really positive I'd say. I love the amount of space that's in the back, and the fact that it looks so clean and comes pre-installed with all that kit. It's just a really good well-rounded package. The RGB elements are really nice, and the two bottom RGB strips do add a little bit of flair on top of the already top-notch RGB fans, and all for 55 quid. In short, I wouldn't hesitate to use this case for someone who wanted a top-notch look, but didn't want to pay a crazy asking price. Now, there are one or two missteps. The temper glass side panel can be a bit fiddly to fit, and personally, I would set the side fans up as intake rather than exhaust as shown here, as it would greatly enhance the cooling characteristics of the case. And finally, I would say that in 2022, I'm very much over PSU shroud cutouts, especially when it can lead to awkward, upside-down sticker scenarios like we've got here, with the PSU set to draw cool air up from underneath the case, as is good practice. But when you end up focusing on PSU stickers and pre-installed fan orientation as the bad points of a case, you can kind of tell there's not much negative things to say about it. For under 60 bucks, it's an extremely solid, good looking, well rounded and feature packed case, and in 2022, it's very rare that I get to say that about a PC component. But I'm going to leave it there for today, a really tidy case and I'm looking forward to playing with the 5700G a bit more. But let me know what you think of the Trooper and how you would spec a budget system. I'll just say thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below and in the next video.